joined by Tilo Kozlowski. He is the CEO of Porsche Digital, a fascinating unit, an area that's expanding. And indeed, the home is Germany, but you've now got a route in Silicon Valley as well. Tell us about the progress you've been making from the digital front for Porsche. So, we started out last year, and we have been operational since September. That's when we started having the first people on board. And prior to that, we defined the strategy and really the mission of what we want to accomplish and the organizational form around that as well. We took our time to do that right, because if you don't do this right, then the rest that follows can't be really successful either. So we're hiring more and more people, we're making great progress in that regard. We're trying to find the right leaders for our group, that we have capabilities on the technology side, the business side, and really have that passion on top of it. Because at the end of the day, Porsche really lifts up that passion that our products represent we want to kind of envision this for the digital dimension as well. And we are building now teams around the world, including Silicon Valley. We started doing this this year, and we're looking at additional places around the world. So it's a huge effort, but it's a really exciting time to get those right mind people into our team. You say, of course, that the digital offerings will start to come. How thick, how fast? What, what, paint the picture of what Porsche Digital will look like in the next five years. So Porsche Digital will, first of all, define the strategic approach for Porsche, what we need to do in the future to remain successful and to expand on these great product offerings that we already have. So we want to make our cars even more exciting. We want you, as a Porsche customer, really focus on what it is that the Porsche essence represents. We take a lot of things away that otherwise would distract you from this. So just think about how we could actually manage information for you inside the car going forward. This is one area. That's really the car aspect, the digital car aspect, if you will. But then we want to go beyond the vehicle. Once you close the door before you open it, we want to interact with you as well and provide you with value propositions that are gain points for you addressing pain points that you have. And that could be all kinds of things where we look at your life to make it more productive, make it more exciting, make it more entertaining, and really arrange things for you in a Porsche-like way so that you have less to worry about and really have much more to look forward to. And then, of course, we're looking into how to make our organization, the company, um, more productive in the processes that we have. So it's a digital car, the digital customer, and the digital organization. The pain points being parking, traffic, but what about the seamless integration of the human with the car? But I'm thinking of an Elon Musk vision where he's seeing part cyborg eventually, but also a sharing of Tesla's on the road. Do you see a sharing of Porsche's on the road or Porsche still very much an individual possession? So, you know, typically you really aspire to the ownership of a Porsche. You know, that's something that we want to kind of preserve. It's something aspirational. You know, there isn't another product that you know young kids hang a post up on the wall because it's aspiring towards that product at some point. It's fascinating if you think about it. There isn't really much. Maybe a star celebrity that, that you would do this with, but not with the product. And that's something that we want to preserve. But we definitely want to go beyond mobility. So you know, there's the car itself, and there's ownership and mobility around it, and then there are other things that are much more lifestyle oriented. And it's really that lifestyle that we want to focus on. Because digitization means you're actually expanding and blurring the lines of a core industry, the industry that you're in and the product that you currently have. You're going to different areas, new segments. We're doing this by combining physical assets, our vehicles, with virtual dimensions and value propositions that might represent your lifestyle. So that means we want to help you to organize your weekend. We want to do this before you even think about having a need doing this in a premium, aspirational way because we know what you want as a customer. How? Paint that organization for me. I get in the car and it tells me where I should go, how I should park, what I should buy. Even before you get into the vehicle, we'll tell you, this is a nice weekend, the weather looks really promising. We pick for you a route that you should actually take in order to get to a really cool location. We arrange for you a hotel, maybe even a tour along with that, which doesn't have to only be limited to the car and we will actually look at other ways of how we can enhance your life, maybe even meeting people that are like-minded and exchange information on a professional level as well as a leisure level. Who do you work with when it comes to the technology giants within the car and who owns the data? So we work with all the big guys currently, we talk to a lot of them, as well as new companies. We're looking for innovators, not just on the technology side, but also on the content side. We want to be in the role of orchestrating all of these aspects at the end of the day really 
make him Porsche light. You want to Porsche fi your experience going forward. We have some really cool and wild ideas. And they're based on theories that we have on how technology is going to change. I'm a firm believer in the fact that you know information, the way we consume it today, is not going to be the way we consume information in the future. Information has to seek us and create an experience around it rather than how we do it today, where we go and use the internet, use mobile devices to get applications and pieces of information. We want to change that completely. And in terms of the data, at the end of the day, it's the customer who owns the data. We only get a permission on behalf of the customer to unify some of this, orchestrate it, and package it in a very meaningful way. And that's very important for us. And we have a trust that consumers give us. Because if you think about it, consumers trust us today with their lives in our vehicles, even on the racetrack. That's a huge promise that just pure technology companies do not have. When, therefore, you're looking at the demand, can you tell us where it's really revving up, pardon the pun, for the demand for digital aspects of Porsche? Is it always in America? Is it developer nations? Is it in developing nations? So we're looking at all the markets that are out there, right? And it's really interesting. Markets are changing because of technology adoption. Even. You may have some countries that are newer, but they have a very strong technology infrastructure, and that's causing consumers who live in those countries to have very different needs than more established you know, like countries and markets in the world where we might not have the technology infrastructure that allows us to do a lot of these things that we're talking about. And then, of course, you have markets like China, which are already, for, for us today, the largest vehicle sales market. Then you have the United States, and we have Silicon Valley, you know, where a lot of the innovations are coming from. But we also have the core markets, traditional markets like Europe, that are hugely important. So we're looking at all of those, and we're making sure that whatever construct we actually put together meets exactly the needs in those markets. But we also believe that there's an opportunity to really have a unified approach, how you actually enable a customer to experience a Porsche in the future. You should be recognized as a Porsche customer as soon as you step somewhere inside a building, inside maybe a business. You should be treated differently because we have a certain understanding of what is important to you. We want to make sure that whatever is presented to you, including the data and information and insights, gets to you really fast. That's kind of how our cars are superior on the road. We want to make sure that you know superior information reaches you in a fast manner, but also in a really meaningful manner. You're a man who knows Silicon Valley well. You've worked there. You're going to be visiting much more often with the hub that you're building there. And you said, in fact, that the future of the automobile and the car is being written in Silicon Valley. Are you worried about Silicon Valley and the talent pool amid the Trump administration? Uh, I'm not worried about that. You know, to be honest, at the end of the day, it's consumers that are going to create demand and will shape the laws and regulations and a lot of these things. We're watching this very closely, obviously. But we do strongly believe that the attractiveness of an offering ultimately will always find its way to consumers who demand it. And geopolitics in general, then, when you're looking at the UK consumer base, have you, do you look at it with as much confidence now, post the Brexit vote, as you did before? Absolutely, we do. And the reason for that is we have a very strong customer base and a huge following in the UK market in particular. It's one of our biggest markets, as a matter of fact. And I don't think that's going to change. You know? Because again, a Porsche you buy not just to get a means of transportation. And our services that we'll offer going forward, you won't just buy or get access to because you just want some information. You do this because you want an experience to go around this. And that's a pretty robust value proposition. And that's something that makes us stronger regardless of how things will change. Where's the biggest competition in the space when it comes to automakers that are getting digital very quickly as well? I think the biggest comp competition isn't necessarily the car manufacturers. It's other companies trying to get to you as a user, providing with a value proposition that could expand into different areas. But I'm not worried about that, to be honest. You know, What we are envisioning, what we're planning to do is really big. We want to change things the way we consume and utilize technology. And that means we would be, become competition with some of those big technology companies in the future. There's a big shift coming. It's based on our assumptions and theories that there's a big shift coming in terms of how consumers are looking to use technology. And we don't want the technology to be in the foreground. We want it to be in the back. We want to lead with the experience and the value proposition that's in the foreground. Technology has to just enable things. That's very different from how a lot of companies are thinking about it. Are you a man who believes that we'll all be sharing vehicles at some point and Uber will be able to 
can get in with the automated vehicle as well? If it's just about transportation, getting really from point A to point B, that's definitely an area that will become more important. And we're looking into those areas as well. We are realizing that you can't be all the time in a Porsche vehicle, so we're looking at end-to-end -end mobility where we might actually cooperate with other companies as well. But I do believe that we're overestimating the demand for this. You know, yes, there are young consumers that might not be as interested anymore in the car, don't get their driver license right away. But we have seen that as these same consumers, as they get older, all of a sudden changing their perspective on this. There's a thing about having your own car, especially if you have a family, where you can actually make sure that the kid seat is in there and it's your product, it's your car, it's your environment that's always there when you want it. You don't want to share necessarily a portion with everyone. And interestingly, of course, you made an investment. Do you have a mobile phone with you? I do have a mobile phone. You have to repeat the last answer. It was not Oh, okay. Anna, what, a, what about the stake you took in a venture capital? Say again, sorry? What about the, the digital... Uh, the stake I took? We also saw Porsche make an investment in the VC community yep. in... How are we seeing that play out? What sort of stakes do you want to take? What sort of companies do you want to buy into? Yeah, absolutely. It's extremely important for us. That's why we're here, for example, at the NOAA conference. We're looking into finding the right innovators, either established companies that we're working with, like some of the tech companies, as well as new ones that are out there that are really interesting because they would allow us to orchestrate that experience that I talked about earlier. So in order to do that, we want to be right at the forefront when these companies and ideas are being formed. We want to connect ourselves right with those entrepreneurs when they have just that idea forming in their head and see how we can implement that in our activities. That's why we're investing directly in some of these companies. Evo Park is one of those examples. We're currently looking into other startups, but we're also working with the VC community. We're pretty much working with all the relevant ones around the world at this point. We have that exchange. They know what we're looking for. They want us to show their portfolios we have ongoing discussions with these companies to get access to these companies as early as possible and to help these companies really focusing on what's the right position for them to be successful. So it's not just taking, it's also giving to these companies because again, we have a very clear vision of where we want to take this. And lastly, does that vision involve electric vehicles purely? And what do you say to perhaps the Queen's speech in the United Kingdom that wanted to push that infrastructure in particular? So definitely we're looking into electric vehicles. That's a very big focus for us. Uh, there will be some very exciting products coming out over the next couple of years, 2019, being the first year where we have a fully electric vehicle, the first one that Porsche has ever built in modern history. We have done this a long, long time ago. But we already have today quite a lineup of hybrid vehicles. Even the car that I showed today, the 918 Spider, is a hybrid vehicle. It can go fully on electric battery power alone and drive for a certain uh, distance. So yeah, that's a big focus for us because obviously we recognize that there's regulation around the world changing, but more importantly, we recognize that consumers really value the technology as well. We will always make sure that regardless of what kind of powertrain technology we're using, a Porsche will remain a Porsche and provide you with that exciting experience that you really want to have the hands on that steering wheel and drive on your own. Tilo Kaslowski, it's been wonderful speaking to you. Best of luck with the continued growth in the digital area, of course, CEO of Porsche Digital Lab.